video, we are going to find the general antiderivative of each of the functions. So the general antiderivative has another name, so which is a general solution, or some book call this an antiderivative. So what, what when they mention these kind of words, what do you need to have in your solution? So when they mention anti an antiderivative, a general solution, general antiderivative, that means there must be a plus C at the end of your answer. So let's take a look at number one. Number one, we have f of x equals to x squared times 12x plus 8 and then plus e to the 10th power. So this one, let's uh, do the distribution first. So f of x equals to, so we have 12 times x to the third and then plus ax squared and then plus e to the 10. All right, and then let's undo the de derivative. So undo the derivative. So we are not going to bring the 3 down and then have a 3 minus 1 anymore. So this is how we are going to do it. So we are going to leave the 12 alone and then x instead of carrying carry it down. So we have a 3 plus 1 equals to 4, right? And then 1 divided by 3 plus 1 and then plus and then this will be x. 2 plus 1, right? So if you ask me, hey, can I just keep the 12 on top? Sure, you can do this. So divide by 2 plus 1. And then e to the 10 is a constant, right? So e to the 10 is a constant. The antiderivative of a constant is just a constant times x. And then at the end, you must have a c, right? So if you, you are still confused about this, so let's say I have a f of x equals to 2 or just y equals to 2. Uh, what is the antiderivative? The antiderivative is f of x equals to 2x, right? So you just add an x right next to the constant because when you take the derivative of 2x, you get the 2 back. When you take the derivative of this, you get the e to the 10 back. All right, and then you clean up the coefficient. So we have f of x equals to 12 divided by 4 is 3 and then x to the fourth power and then plus a over 3, and then x to the third power, and then plus e to the 10, x, and then plus c. This is called a general solution. How do I know this is right? All you have to do is you take the derivative. So you bring the 4 down, 4 minus 1. I'm sure you can see what the answer is. And then you bring the 3 down, 3 minus 1, and then you have an e to the 10. The derivative of c is just equals to 0. All right? And then moving on to number two, let's switch a color for new problem. So number two, we have f of x equals to three times the square root of x minus two times the fifth root of x and then plus secant x times tangent x and then minus 10 times e to the x. All right, so first let's uh, rewrite the square, the, the radical as a uh, rational exponent. So f of x that is equals to 3 times x to the 1 half minus 2 times x to the 1 fifth and then plus secant x tangent x and then minus 10 e to the x. All right now we are ready to undo the derivative and then we have uh, f of x. Remember this so this one is x raised to the 1 half plus 1 and then you have 1 divided by 1 half plus 1 and then it is okay to just put the 3 on top and then minus x and then 1 fifth plus 1 and then uh, 1 fifth plus 1 goes to the denominator because when you take the exponent down the denominator will be cancelled and then you subtract 1 in the exponent then you get the 1 fifth back and then this is a 2 and then how about the secant x tangent x the derivative of what is equals to secant times tangent? The answer is the derivative of secant x is equals to secant x times tangent x. If you are not familiar with this, you have to go back to you have to go back to review the derivative of trigonometric function. And then the antiderivative of e to the x, very special case, is still e to the x. So when you take the derivative of 10 times e to the x, you get this back, right? Uh, did I forget something? Yep, a C, because we are looking for a general solution. And then uh, you have to clean up the, the exponent. 
So one half plus one is uh, let, let's do the math right here. Is three divided by three three over two, right? So that is equals to two, and then two divided by six over five. That is equals to you flip the five back to the top, right? You flip the um six over five. You flip the five back to the top, and then the two over six is just a one third. So that is equals to five over three. So overall, you have a two x to the three half, and then minus five over three, and then x to the six over five plus c can x, and then minus ten e to the x, and then plus c. This is your final answer. Should I put the uh, rational exponent back to a radical? Uh, this one, if you uh, to me, I think the answer is not necessary. But if you are doing this online or your instructor wants you to put it back to a radical, then you have to follow the rule. So this will be two, and then the square root of x to the third, and then this is a five over three, the fifth root of x to the six, and then the rest you know what to do, right? So moving on to the next problem, the next problem we switch to a different color. Number three, we have f of x equals to two minus x plus x to the fifth divided by x squared. We are not doing derivative, so this is not a quotient rule. When you see a fraction like this, you have to break it down into three fractions: two divided by x squared minus x divided by x squared plus x to the fifth. Divided by x squared, and then you simplify that. Of course, f of x is equals to two x raised to the negative two, and then minus x raised to a negative one, and then plus x raised to the five minus two is equals to three. And then we are ready to undo the derivative. So f of x, what is that equal to? This is negative two plus one, right? And then this thing goes to the denominator, and then the coefficient just leave that on top, and then x to the. Is this correct? One divided by negative one plus one. That's why I, I designed this problem, and then plus x to the. Three, three plus one, divided by one over three plus one. Now my question is, is this correct? Is this right or wrong? So if you go ahead and do the math, what do you see? If you go ahead and do the math, what do you get? You have one divided by zero, and then x raised to the zero. What is one divided by zero equals to? We don't know, right? One divided by zero is basically uh, un undefined. Then that means we are stuck right here. So what is the correct answer? Now to Answer this question. Can you tell me the derivative of what is equals to one over x? Because x to the negative one is equals to one over x, right? Remember this. When you take the derivative of ln x, that is equals to one over x. So that means when you handle the antiderivative of x to the raised to the negative one, you have to be very careful with this. When you handle the antiderivatives, so in the future they will use the word the integral integration. When they ask for this integration, what is the right answer? So let me write the right answer right here. So we have f of x equals to this is a negative two plus one, right? It's just a negative one. Two divided by negative one is negative two, and then x to the negative one, right? And then this one, the derivative of x to the negative one is just an ln x, all right? And then plus one over four x to the fourth. Plus c. This is the correct answer. If using negative exponent is not allowed, then you have to put that as negative two divided by x minus ln x plus one over four x to the four plus c. If using negative exponent is not allowed. Okay, moving on to number four. We switch color for number four. So number four, we have a uh, f of theta. Equals to two times sine of theta minus cosine theta, and then minus secant square theta. All right, undo the derivative. Uh, the antiderivative of sine is 
the derivative of what is equals to sine. The derivative of cosine is equals to sine. Is this correct? No. The derivative of cosine is equals to negative sine. Since there is no negative in front of the sine, then you have to prepare an extra negative in front of cosine. And then the two, the two remains unchanged. The derivative of sine is equals to cosine. And then the derivative of tangent is equals to secant. And I miss a what? I miss a constant. All right, so that is the answer of number four. Number five, last one. Number five, we have f of x equals to 2x squared plus 5 divided by x squared plus 1. And then this one, if you go back to the top of this video, the beginning of this video, you will see that I rewrite the 5 as 2x squared plus 2 plus 3 and then divided by x squared plus 1. Because if you don't do this, it is impossible to find the antiderivative using the skills that we have so far. Again, antiderivative is called integration. There are many, many integration techniques that you will learn in the future when you get to your next level of calculus. All right. So this one, uh, the reason I do this is because I want to factor out a 2. So I have x squared plus 1 and then have the 3 at the end divided by x squared plus 1. And then I can break it down into two fractions. f of x is equals to 2 times x squared plus 1 divided by x squared plus 1, right? Using the x squared plus 1 as a common denominator. And then that becomes 2 plus 2 plus what? Plus 3 times 1 divided by x squared plus 1. I use an x squared plus 1 for a reason. When you find the antiderivative, the antiderivative of 2 is just equals to 2x, right? And then the 3 is just a 3. What about the antiderivative of 1 divided by x squared plus 1? If you don't ring, if that doesn't ring your bell, tell me the derivative of what is equals to 1 divided by x squared plus 1. There is such a formula. And trust me, when you learn integration, you will be using this formula very, very, very often. The answer is the antiderivative of this is equal to inverse tangent of x. And of course, don't forget that you have to add a plus c at the end. All right, take one more note for me. So the derivative of inverse tangent of x is equal to 1 divided by x squared plus 1. You will be using this very often when you study the integration techniques. All right, so that will be all in this video. So if you think my video is helpful to your learning, please subscribe, click the like, share this videos out for me. And I appreciate your help really, really much. I see you all in the next one.